It has in it all that you feel about Spain when you are there and all that you feel when you are away and cannot go there. Ernest Hemingway. What did the farm uh, mean to your grandfather? Give us a little bit of background. This painting meant a lot to my grandfather because he was going through a huge crisis of expression after having been experimenting with post-impressionism and phobism and cubism, but he was not able to find himself on the right path. And he really went through a great, great depression. His mother said, well, it's time to just leave Barcelona and take him to Monroch, which is 100 miles south from Barcelona. And she just bought this farm. Miro spent so much time away from Spain uh, in, in all of his years in France, but kept going back to the farm uh, every summer. He really felt this strong connection with nature. And little by little, he was just putting all the elements that you can see in the farm. And you will see how little by little, Miro was finding himself. When I was with my grandfather for long walks, he wanted to collect bits and pieces and take all these things to the studio to use them as a reference before jumping into the battlefield of the canvas. Tell me um, a little bit about uh, where you are right now in the painting. I'm seeing, when you see the white facade of the uh, building on the painting, do you see on the top a little window? Yes, the big building on the left. Yeah, absolutely. In that window, looking out. Everything is very, is very sharp and pointed. The thorns on the tree, even the mountains in the distance. In the next few years, all of that will become much more fantastic. And the creatures he invents, they evolve very quickly <laughs> in, in a uh, sort of post-Darwinian fashion into these wonderful creatures, monsters, sometimes uh, human, animal of his imagination. And, and, and I think we, we really feel it taking root in the farm, almost uh, being fertilized in this soil. He's about to somehow see how through being able to look within himself, be able to see how his heart beats, his spiritual state of mind, his connection with the starry night, his connection with the mountains, his connection with the sea, with the Mediterranean sky, little by little is forming Miro's alphabet. He starts the farm at the farm, but then he's spending months um, finishing the painting in Paris. So there's a real aspect of memory, of poetics really, that works into the painting as he's remembering and feeling everything about the farm. He was in Paris, his last show was a big failure, and he was penniless. He was able to talk to Picasso and said, hey Pablo, would you please give me a hand with this? May I talk to uh, your art dealers in Paris because maybe they, you know, they want to buy my painting. So Picasso's dealer saw the painting and said, I like the word, but could you please cut it off in eight pieces because they are just way too big to fit in a regular uh, Paris uh, apartment. So my grandfather was absolutely out of race saying, what are you saying? Are you kidding me? How am I going to cut my painting? Come on, get out of my house. In fact, we can see that he even enlarged the painting at some point. The, the strip on the top where the moon is, is a piece of canvas that was added. So he wanted it bigger, not smaller. So Ernest Hemingway comes into the story of the painting. My grandfather and Hemingway met in Paris in 1921. They become very good friends because they were going uh, boxing to the same club together. And people were laughing at them because Hemingway was very tall and Miro was very small. Hemingway just fell in love with the farm and he spoke with uh, his friend Evan Schiffman. John Dos Passos was also in the party. So they pay 1,000 French francs up front to the Miro's art dealer. And then they were running around to all the cafes in Montparnasse, talking to all the friends and collect the 4,000 left. Having Hemingway kept this masterpiece really helped my grandpa in his career. And my grandpa always said, you know, I am very happy 
that you have bought this painting. He was always very pleased to know that he was the one that bought it. So thank goodness for Hemingway. He takes it with him wherever he goes and it ends up for many years in Cuba. It was spirited out of Cuba at the very moment of the revolution to New York. It finally arrives at the National Gallery. The painting was finished in 1922 and we are now in 2022, a hundred years. This painting has survived a hundred years and it is a extremely important masterpiece in my grandfather's career. Upon returning again to Monroe's and reviewing my work, it's very much a product of this place. When I saw the countryside around the farm that are so grand in their simplicity, I realized that much of my work is simple, grandiose, and brutal, and rightly so.